In this video, I'm going to discuss the buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve, um, an ICT basic principle. You can also find similar ideas in Wyckoff theory as well. Um, okay, guys, so in this video, we're going to discuss what is the buy side of the curve and what is the sell side of the curve and how can you use that information along with your other ICT concepts. Uh, before I get in the video, guys, I want to say that uh, I'm, I'm not feeling too great and my voice is pretty weak, so um, bear with me. Uh, I apologize for that, but I think that this is going to be an informative video and, and really ground some of your understanding of price action, and so I think this is an important one for you to sit in and watch. Um, with that being said, guys, uh, let me start with the disclaimers. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Trading futures involve substantial risk of loss, including more than you initially invest in your account. Do not trade with funds that you can afford that you cannot afford to lose. Um, I am not liable for any of your decisions. Okay, guys, with that out of the way, please use my referral links in the description box below. Apex Trader Funding is currently running a sale. Um, click on that Apex Trader Funding and sign up using my referral link. Okay, guys, so what are this video shouldn't be too long, um, but I want to give you a basic idea. We'll start on a daily chart. What is the buy side and what is the sell side of the curve? Um, generally speaking, the stock market goes up over time, right? This can be because the dollar itself uh, is devalued. Remember that ultimately the index will be influenced by dollar prices and as time goes on the dollar becomes more and more debased and so over time uh, because there's GDP growth because stocks generally gain in value over time the stock market by default goes up but on a daily on a daily basis on an intraday basis what the market is essentially is a sign curve okay this sign curve is uh, what Wyckoff, Wyckoff talks about, um, Dow theory talks about as well. But the basic idea is that the market moves kind of like this. It moves in a sign curve on any given day, okay, with the default that it, that it usually goes up over time. Okay, so how do you use that information? There are two sides to the sign curve. Okay, there's the buy side and there's the sell side. Okay, I... There it is. Um, the buy side and the sell side. So guys, the buy side of the curve is very easy to understand. It's when the market is going up. And the sell side of the curve is when this is when the market is going down. Um, rather than spending too much time on drawings, I'm just going to show you. Okay, what does the buy side of the curve look like, and what does the sell side of the curve look like? Well, if we take the daily chart here, okay, and let's frame it as like this. Okay. So, sort of ignoring our expansion that we've been having recently higher. If we just take this price fractal right here that I've highlighted in this box. The buy side of the curve is quite simply that part of the trading range where the market was trading higher. Okay, I'm delineating this in blue. That is the buy side of the curve. Okay. The sell side of the curve, alternatively, is when the market is trading uh, lower. Okay, so I'm going to show that in red. So the sell side of the curve is that part of the curve in which the market was trading lower. Um, on an on an intraday basis, you're going to find these curves <coughs> all the time. I'm sorry, I got to take a quick break. I'm not feeling very good. Um, Anyways, um, the buy side of the curve is that part of the sign curve when the market is moving higher, and the sell side of the curve is when the market is moving lower. Now, how does that inform your trading decisions? Well, it's not enough to merely be able to identify you know, whether the market is in the buy side of the curve or the sell side of the curve. You need to see 
uh, in relation to the opposite side of the curve, what has the market done? And guys, what I'll, I'll just briefly describe to you is that it, it starts with these runs on liquidity. So if we have, let's say, for example, we have the sell side of the curve right here. Okay, so this candle from Wednesday, the 20th of December, uh, and the uh, really just Wednesday's candle, right, which was a big black candle. That was the sell side of the curve. Whenever you have the sell side of the curve, you know that there's buy side liquidity that is sitting above that part of the you see that there's buy side liquidity that's sitting above that part of the curve. And what does the market do, guys? We're starting to put things together. The market runs on liquidity. Where is the liquidity? It's above recent highs and it's below recent lows. Okay, so when you see that the market has made the sell side of the curve, you want to look at where the market is currently, uh, how the market is currently reacting in relation to the opposite side of the curve. So we look at Thursday's candle and we can see that it closed above the 50% point of Wednesday's candle, and it looks like it's targeting that buy side liquidity. Now, as the market trades above that buy side liquidity, notice that it starts to falter. Okay, and now what do we have here? Here we have the buy side of the curve. Okay, so this is what's referred to as stops taken. So we know that we had buy side liquidity here. In other words, we had resting orders that were sitting in the marketplace that were absorbed when the market came up. And look at what Thursday's candle did, right? So Thursday's candle was a small spinning top candle that just traded above Wednesday's prior high. That's when you know that the market has taken uh, liquidity and it's going to look to offset that liquidity where? Well, it's going to look to offset that liquidity down below prior lows. Okay, so that that in essence, guys, is is what uh, the basic understanding of the buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve will will allow you to sort of see visually. The market offsets uh, it, it it offset distributes uh, short term liquidity. So if it runs above a prior high and you start to see it falter, there's a good chance it's going to go and run below a, a low. All right. So similarly, guys. Notice that what we had here on the daily chart was a fair value gap. Okay, go ahead and remove that bottom line of the box. Okay, so here we have a fair value gap, but notice it was also, also short-term sell side liquidity. So as the market came into that sell side of the curve, we want to look for uh, where, how is the market going to react to the buy side of the curve. In this case, there was your buy side of the curve right there. Okay, which I'm delineating in blue. There we have an ICT pattern, a fair value gap. And notice that the market traded, or excuse me, closed above the 50% point of that fair value gap. See, Friday the 5th of June's candle closed above 50% of the fair value gap here on the buy side of the curve. All right, well, that's a good, that's a good indication that the next run on liquidity is going to be on the buy side liquidity. We just ran on sell side liquidity. We filled in this ICT fair value gap. And now, look at what the market does. The market comes up very logically and runs on this rejection block, which is a liquidity signature. Again, the market trades lower. And this would be the buy side of the curve in this instance right here. Okay, well, what do we see? There's a fair value gap right here. Market closes above it. And then we're going to run above that buy side liquidity. So notice, if I remove our drawings here, there we have buy side liquidity. And look at how the market ran above that buy side liquidity. All right. So let's go on an intraday time frame and let me point out the buy side and the sell side of the curve to you. So let's get down on a one hour chart and show you how these things are constantly playing out. So first, let me walk you through this example. All right, baby steps. Here we have the buy side of a curve. All right. Notice that when the market, it, it's kind of difficult to see, and I understand that you know this takes time to adjust to, but the market basically moves like this. All right. It's basically a sine wave, but it, you know it has a lot of jagged edges. It's not perfect. 
But notice that the, the basic way that the stock market, that the futures market appears on, on a given time frame is that sine curve, okay? So here we have the buy side of the curve. Okay. At the very top of the buy side of the curve, the first thing that you can do is take your tool. Okay, so we'll take a horizontal ray tool. Buy side liquidity. Okay. Now, as the market starts to run lower, run into the buy side of the curve, what are we looking for? We don't know. <coughs> the market could have come all the way down and run on this sell side liquidity. It didn't, but we don't know that at the time. So what are we looking for? We're looking for our classic ICT pattern. So what do we see here on the hourly chart? Okay, that fair value gap there. Notice that the market comes in, trades into that fair value gap, but then does not want to close within or below that fair value gap, which is a good sign that the market uh, was going to turn around. So, you know, sort of, I'm going to brush over a lot of this price action within this range. What I want to point out to your attention is that notice that the market came down to the 50% point of this consequent wick right here. And what did we do? We ran on the buy side liquidity, right? So that's, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for to identify how the market uh, is reacting on the buy side or the sell side of the curve, okay? All right. So I think that that, let me, All right, here's a good example. Okay, so if you're following along, you can see that we have the sell side of the curve here. Now, what are we looking for? First off, we want to identify where is our liquidity resting. Well, there was pretty clear buy side liquidity here, right? We can see that we have a lot of equal highs, relatively equal highs. We know that there are stops that were sitting above 48.15 spot 50. Now, as the market came back up to the buy side of the curve, we're looking for ICT patterns that indicate to us that the market wants to go run on that buy side liquidity. All right, so what do we have here? Here we have an inverted fair value gap. Okay, so notice right here that the market comes back down on Thursday the 18th of January we trade back into this sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency here and notice that the market closes well above it trades into it comes above it that was a <coughs> strong sign that the buy side of the curve was going to go run on that buy side liquidity and if you take a look here that trade would have been 38 almost 40 points so that's what I'm trying to teach you in this lesson is I'm trying to teach you to identify the buy side and the sell side of the curve. All right, now guys, this is not a perfect science, but as you can see, the market largely follows a sine wave. Um, and I'm also gonna uh, point you to uh, I'm gonna point you to the right ICT video. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to show you here is I recommend that you go look at ICT's Universal Trading, uh, ICT Charter Price Action Model 7. He just put out this video. 
this discusses the buy side and the sell side of the curve more thoroughly. All right, guys, with that being said, uh, I'm done and out. This has been my video on the buy side and the sell side of the curve. I hope that it, it roughly gave you an idea of what to look for. If you want more explanation, I recommend this video here, ICT Charter Price Action Model 7. Bye-bye.